Hello, I'm Dr. Smerat. I'm one of the interventional cardiologists at the Heart and Vascular Clinics. We're part of the Manhattan Specialist Center. I'm here today to talk with you about a cardiac catheterization procedure. You might hear other terms like left heart catheterization, right heart catheterization, or just simply cardiac cath. These are all talking about the same or similar procedures that are designed to go in and look at the what we call your coronary arteries. Now let's take a step back. Think of your heart as a pump. Any pump out there needs fuel to run. For the heart that fuel is blood. Now the pipes that bring that fuel into the pump or into the muscle or into your heart, these are what we call the coronary arteries. They are small arteries that are about three to five millimeter in diameter. They run outside your heart at the surface and they bring blood into the muscle itself. With different risk factors, whether it's your age, blood pressure, weight, diabetes, cholesterol, smoking, um, sedentary lifestyle, etc., these arteries are pr prone to get sick. There are multiple ways for them to get sick. It's either they cl start clogging up by cholesterol, building up inside gradually over months or two years, and eventually manifest by you feeling tired, short of breath, or chest pain. Or they would clog up suddenly with a blood clot, and that's when we say somebody had a heart attack. And that's when you go to the emergency room because you felt sudden onset of bad symptoms like chest pain and shortness of breath. There are a lot of other diseases that can happen here, but these are the main ones that we address. So now going back to the cardiac cath, it's a procedure designed to actually go and look at the artery and figure out what is going on in it. The first thing I want you to know about this, it's not a surgery. You're not gonna be under general anesthesia. You're not gonna be out. There's not gonna be a breathing tube down your throat. We give you what we call moderate sedation, which means a bunch of medications that will basically relax you. And if you want to fall asleep, by all means, but then we are able to wake you up and talk to you throughout the whole procedure. Um, the other thing is we basically enter one of the arteries in your body. Um, most of the times it's either one in your groin or one in your wrist. And we give you a numbing medication in that area. And the numbing medication would be the only thing you're going to experience unpleasantly. It feels like a pinch and a burn. It lasts for about a few seconds and then it goes away on its own. Once we numb it, we actually enter the artery via a tube. And then that tube is our gateway inside your vascular system. And your arteries to me are basically like a road map. So I know the road map and I know my destination, which is your heart. So I start driving with small wires and tubes push them across the arteries, let's assume in your hand, all the way until I get to your heart. And then using my tube, I can inject a dye inside these coronary arteries that I want to look at. The dye is going to run inside the artery. It's going to take the shape of the artery. And you notice that you're going to be laying on a bed on your back. There's going to be a machine on top of you. It's going to be moving all over the place. That's really my camera. And it's moving all over the place to take pictures from different angles. This camera is going to see the dye. The dye has already taken the shape of the artery. It will show it to me on the monitor. So technically now I'm looking at your arteries. There are usually four possibilities of what I can find. Number one, your arteries are going to be completely open and healthy. We're done. So whatever theory we thought something might be happened, now we have the good case scenario that the theory was not true and you do not have disease. The second possibility is that I'm going to find a little bit of disease in your arteries. Let's assume a 10% narrowing here, a 20% narrowing over there, but no significant blockages. And again, I'm done. We can manage this by medications and adjusting your risk factors that we spoke about earlier. The third possibility is that I go in and I find a significant blockage in one of the arteries that would explain what we were suspicious of in the first place. For example, I find one of the arteries to be 90% occluded or 100% occluded or 80% occluded. At that point, I go in and basically I end up being a plumber and I fix that artery for you. And that entails me putting a stent, which is a metal mesh that's just meant to be placed in the artery and keep it open. 
And the fourth possibility and the final possibility is really the worst case scenario. When I go in and then I end up finding that you have severe disease, multiple arteries involved, dangerous areas involved, critical levels of stenosis, at which point usually we take a step back and try to look at the bigger picture. Sometimes we might fix a part of the problem, leave the rest for later. Sometimes we might say, um, we need to get out now, plan for a complicated procedure, and then come back later, whether it's in this hospital or a different hospital. Sometimes it might be that we need to refer you to a cardiothoracic surgeon to consider open bypass surgery because that would be a better solution for your problem. And not to say that that's what happens all the time, but these are the f four possible um, pathways, I would say, that we usually go across when we do a cardiac catheterization procedure. The procedure is a safe procedure. It's a common procedure. It takes about 45 minutes to one hour, but depending on what technical challenges we face or what we might have to fix, it can be a two or three or even sometimes four hour procedure. Most of the time, I can tell you, we're done within one hour. The other thing I'd like to discuss with you about the cardiac catheterization procedure is the access site. The destination, we know it, it's your heart. How we're gonna get there, we can enter from multiple areas, whether it's on the right side of your body or the left side, whether it's your groin or your wrist. There's been a lot of literature looking and trying to figure out which is worse, which is better, and really they're both valid. Um, the wrist is more convenient for you as a patient because if I go through your groin, usually that entails after the procedure, you have to continue laying on your back for a minimum of two hours and it can go all the way up to six or 12 hours after that. If I go through your wrist, obviously once we're done, everything comes out, you get a band around your arm, the band will hold the artery, stop it from bleeding, it stays on for two hours, you're free to eat, you're free to sit up in those two hours and then the band goes off and then you're able to go home or continue your admission at the hospital. Now, this is not to say that complications do not happen if we went through the arm, but they're less likely vascular access site complications to happen via the arm in comparison to the groin. Sometimes the arm is not available to us, whether it's because of your anatomy, whether because you're someone who gets dialysis and we wanna save that arm for potential fistulas or grafts or for other reasons, and we have to use the groin at that point. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is what to expect before and after the procedure. Before the procedure, usually if you're doing it as an outpatient, you're going to come in at a certain time, usually two or three hours before the procedure. The nurses will receive you. They're going to connect you to the monitors, establish an IV access line so that we can give you drugs through that. And you'll basically just sit there and wait. Um, until the procedure time comes along, at which point the cath staff are going to come and take you to the cath lab. Your family usually has a family waiting room where they can wait, and I usually come out after the procedure and speak with them. Um, you get sedation in the cath lab. Sometimes if some patients are really anxious, we give you some sedation before you go to the cath lab. After the procedure, Usually you come out of the cath lab, you go back to the same room you were in. Sometimes maybe we, you're going to need an admission and you're just going to go to your admission room at the hospital. And like I said, if we access your groin, you're going to have to lay flat for a while. If we went through your arm, you're going to have a band around it. Usually if we took you and we didn't find anything, I didn't fix anything, we didn't get complications, you're going to go home the same day. However, if we get a complication or if we fix something, usually we want to admit you and observe you at least for a minimum of 24 hours after the procedure. So I hope this answers some of your questions at least about what a cardiac catheterization is and what happens through that experience. And remember always, if you have any additional questions, anything that I didn't address today, speak to your cardiologist before the procedure. We are required to consent to you before any procedure and answer all your questions and explain to you all the things that we just spoke about. What is the indication for the procedure? How does the procedure go? Why are we doing the procedure? What are any other possible alter alternatives? And what are the complications of that procedure? And thank you.